Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Liel and today uh, we're going to expand on the yesterday's video because uh, there was a question about the poly painting inside of Marmonset and I do think it's very very important that we know that one as well. Now uh, for those of you that are unaware, Marmonset, I hate when this happens. <laughs> so Marmoset is this render engine that we have available that allows us to render things very similarly to how a game engine would do it. Nowadays, with Blender, with Maya, with other solutions out there, even Unreal Engine and Unity, you 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 have more options, right? But I still think Marmoset is a really, really strong software because it allows you to create really, really, really nice renders and they look really, really, really it's really easy to get them to look nice. Um, if you guys are interested, we do have the Marmoset course inside our 50 bundle uh, pack. We uh, have this special 50 bundle pack with a super price. So check this really quick commercial. Hey guys, we have some great news for you. We know how important it is to prepare yourself and keep learning amazing skills to improve your portfolio. And that is why we're offering a super epic bundle of our best 50 courses for you. This epic bundle is available through ArtStation. It contains all of the videos and project files for our top 50 courses. We have modeling, sculpting, rendering, rigging, animation, Maya, characters, creatures, props, substance painter, ZBrush, and Real Engine. All of the topics that we've been covering in the past years are going to be there. Our top 50 courses are going to be included in this bundle. This bundle is at a super price with an amazing 80% discount. And we will have this bundle available throughout the January. So, if you are wanting or you want to have some very nice New Year resolutions, if you want to increase your 3D levels and you want to become a master at the 3D art, then this is your opportunity. Make sure to check the link down below. So, before we uh, do the whole, um, what's the word? The whole Marmoset thing, which believe me, it's super, super easy. I want to give you a quick overview of how to create or paint a relatively fast um, skin texture here with poly paint. So let's jump into it. I'm still not super used to like switching from one place to another with my tablet. I'm sorry about that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my standard brush. I'm going to change this to color spray and I'm going to add the alpha 23, which is this like little dot stuff. We're going to go for a base tone for the character. I think I want to go for this sort of like grayish hue. I do recommend using the basic material because it has a little bit more light, so you're going to be able to appreciate things a little bit better. And if your material is not working perfectly like as you would like, you can go here to the modifiers and increase the ambient a little bit. That's going to like make it a little bit lighter uh, so that we can see the colors. So let's go a little bit more saturated. Not as pink. There we go, something like this. And I'm going to say, I'm going to turn off C add, I'm going to turn on RGV, and I'm going to say color and fill object. And now the whole character is filled with that color. I'm going to select the eyes because I don't want to be like distracted by them. So I'm going to select the eyes. I'm going to say color, fill object. There we go. Let's go back to this guy. I'm not sure why we didn't get the proper skin tone. There we go. Color, fill object. That's a little bit orangey. Color, fill object. There we go. So this technique I actually learned from um, Madeline Scott Spencer. She is a great car character artist. She was working at Weta for a long time and uh, Lord of the Rings and all that stuff. And um, I I don't remember how she calls this uh, specific technique, but I like to call it the clown technique because it makes the character look like a clown. But then it gives you a really nice result. So basically, the human body has three tones, if you wish. It has like warm tones, cold tones, and like neutral tones, which are going to be represented by uh, red, blue, and yellow. We're going to start with the red color right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start filling very softly. As you can see, I'm not like going super extreme with my with my weight here. I'm going to go very softly. I'm going to fill the character with a very nice like um, a very nice layer of all of these things. This technique, by the way, I do think I covered this on the complete guide to Seabrush 2022. There was a student yesterday who was asking me what uh, courses do I recommend after they finish the Maya one. And if you don't know much about Seabrush or sculpting, the complete guide to Seabrush 2022 is a great way to start. So yeah, this is the, the basic like red thing right here. As you can see, I'm not making my brush super big. I want to keep the brush like at a, at a small size so that we get small dots. And that's going to give a very nice like airbrushed effect. I really want to learn airbrushing on the real world. I think that's my next uh, goal for, for my miniature hobby painting that I do for, for Dungeons & Dragons. Um, I've never used an airbrush in real life, 
but I have been told that this thing that we're doing right here makes it really close to, or makes it feel really close to how it would look on, on the real world. And the reason why airbrushes are used in, in like a makeup and cosmetics and stuff like that is because they give you a very soft effect. If you try brushing this with like just a, a blob of paint, you're going to get the brush strokes. And some people like that sort of uh, finish for their characters. But in this particular case, I think we're going to go for a softer one. As you can see, not really being too careful about this one, just like filling everything with uh, this red uh, tone everywhere. Now that we have a very basic uh, like layer, I am going to go a little bit heavier on certain areas, such as, such as the nose the ears, and pretty much every part where there's a little bit of uh, muscle, where you would expect muscle to, to build up and to, to be, we're going to increase the intensity of the red. So for instance, the deltoid muscle, which is a huge, huge muscle here on the shoulder, we're going to be using this one right there. Let's go over here, pectoral muscle, a little bit of the rib cage, the abdominals, the bicep, of course, and we just fill everything in. Now we're going to jump onto the blues, and I usually like blues, or I tend to go a little bit towards the purples, like dark purples, and we're going to use this for cavities, and again, we're going to go softly onto the cavities, such as the eyes, a little bit on the mouth, on the inside of the nose, we can make this a little bit smaller, so when, when you see, or you see like big wrinkles, you, you want to add a little bit of blue there, underneath the, um, the neck, for instance, uh, where you see like, um, again, cavities or, or little dips on a character where the shadow would be. We're pretty much painting the shadow of the character with this. This is a technique. I, I learned this technique. Ooh, this was one of the first techniques I learned without a teacher. Like it was a self-taught. Of course, uh, as I mentioned, Madeline Scott Spencer, she was the one that, that uh, I learned it from, but it was from a book. It was a very old book. I, I've shown this one before. It's a book where she makes a, um, a character, a, a superhero. And the, I learned that one from, from that guy. I'm being bombarded by messages. Give me just one second. Okay. Just making sure there's nothing important. There we go. So any part where there's not a lot of heat, where I have a little bit of blue, and I usually like to, to place a little bit of blue everywhere so that we get something just like interesting that, that creates uh, interesting effects. And the reason why this technique works is when the little red dots merge with the little uh, purple dots or the little blue dots, you get this sort of like greenish hues, right? All over the place. And that's gonna give you a more interest, um, like texture for the whole skin. So there we go. Finally, the yellows are gonna be fat. I like to go for this sort of like warm oranges colors usually instead of like pure yellow. And fat and bone, cartilage, all of those things are where you're gonna add a little bit of yellow. So especially for instance here, up here on the, on the skull, there's a lot of bone. And if you've seen the like uh, bald people, uh, they, they tend to, to show a little bit of the bone and uh, it, you do get this sort of like hues everywhere. This is where your, your study, uh, I always tell my, my wife that whenever I'm out like on a, on a family uh, like outing or whatever, I, I like to look at stuff. I like to look at people without being, of course, uh, invasive. I like to look at structures. I like to look at uh, cloth, everything. And I just analyze it quickly on my mind and think, oh, okay, how would I do that in 3D, right? How would I uh, interpret that? How would I sculpt that? And all of those like little exercises that you do of analyzing things will make up or will build your mental library so that when you need to do it, you already have a, a little bit of, uh, of a base to, to work from. So yeah, as you can see with this, we've pretty much filled the, the character with, again, this sort of like a uh, clown. I call, call this a clown technique because he looks kind of like a clown. Uh, and if you overdid a couple of colors, you can, of course, go back, for instance, with the red and bring a little bit of that red back. But as you can see, it gives us a really, really nice, interesting like skin tone overall. Now what I can do is I can sample the skin tone, the original skin tone, bring my RGB intensity down to like a 5%, and I'm gonna start filling this in a couple of times. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just gonna keep going until we get back the original like skin tone without losing too much of the colors. And here you can give another pass with a low RGB intensity just to bring a little bit of that like red color back. Actually, let me go for the, for the red colors. And I can just add again a little bit of interest. I'm not gonna go super crazy because as the more I do this, the more the more red I get. But uh, just adding or, or bringing back some of that color. Let's do the lips, for instance. Let's go for this dark red. I'm gonna bring the intensity a little bit higher. I'm just gonna paint the lips a little bit so we get a a slightly different tone. I don't want this to look like lipstick, so I think that's a little bit too much. I'm gonna bring the intensity back. 
So we're only like slightly darkening the, the lips. Probably the same thing as the um, as the as the nipples here. So just add a little bit of hue there to the nipples. And there we go. With this, we have a very nice base. Nowadays, this is not what I would do actually for the new course that we're working with, uh, the, the texturing course for the Thyros character, the Devil character. We're going to be doing a, a similar technique, but instead of Substance Painter to get a more realistic effect, a more realistic skin tone. And uh, But for Polypaint, if you just want to do a quick concept, this is a perfect way to do it. Now, I do want to add like another layer of something, and I think well, Warp Paint is usually like the way to go. So I'm going to go for this sort of like blue color. I love the sort of like electric blue color, so something like this. And uh, let's add some, some war paint here. I'm definitely going to increase the intensity. And we can add some like runes going around. Again, I'm going to do them with a, like a dry brush. Actually, I don't think, I think I'm going to go freehand, but I'm going to add like a, a brush that has a little bit of texture, such as, could even be this, like half of 25. You said it looks like it's been uh, carved in, or not carved in, but painted with like a brush. So let's do a very typical fantasy thing where it has like three bars here on the eye. I'm gonna do one, two, and then this third one. I'm gonna create a slightly different shape here. It's the one around here. I like when they get like a like a chin mark as well. And we can add like, like a sort of like geometric rune on this side. And this is the fun thing about the polypaint, the fact that you don't need to really do UVs or anything. You can keep things very, very uh, simple here instead of zebras. You can just do a concept and then you just save this go back a couple of steps and then try another thing, right? So you show this to your art leader or to whoever the client is, and if they don't like it, that's fine. You you didn't commit everything to like uh, textures and, uh, and UVs and retopology and everything. You're just showing concept. Concepting nowadays, um, especially with like AI and stuff, it's going to be a really competing or, or com yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot of uh, a competition on the, on the concept side of things. So probably the best thing you can do is have as many tools in your arsenal to be able to offer solutions and the uh, options to your client. That's what's going to make you a valuable uh, concept artist. So if you know how to do kit bashing, if you know how to do uh, poly paint and, and just quick renders instead of Marmoset, if you know how to do, um, I don't know, photo bashing, all the, all the techniques, if you're going to be a concept artist, you need to know as many techniques as possible. So there we go. This is what we have right here. What I'm going to do now is I am going to uh, clone this or merge this very similar to what we did yesterday. So I'm going to merge visible. This is the um, the merge like a character right here. Now we don't need the stylus anymore. And we're going to decimate. So as you can see, 14 million polygons, quite a bit of polygons. We definitely need to bring this down. Um, Marmoset can, can definitely like uh, handle a lot of polygons, but we don't want to abuse it. So we're going to go decimation master, make sure to use and keep poly paint. And we're going to do pre-process current. I'm going to pause real quick, wait for this to finish. It might take a couple of minutes and I'll be right back. Very well. It's about to finish. It's doing the final reordering. It took about two or three minutes to, to finish the whole thing. Uh, again, depending on your system and the amount of points that you have for the Decimation Master, you might need more or less time. So yeah, um, it's writing the file. And once we do this, we're going to decimate this. I think we're going to go for 10% decimation but so that we get to 1.4 points, which is going to be like 2 million things, or maybe like a 5%. Let's start at 5% and decimate current. So we're going to go from 14 uh, million points to, yeah, to this one. And as you can see, we don't really lose detail. We don't really lose uh, a lot of, of polypaint information. Yes, everything is like uh, uh, triangulated and stuff, but this is going to work perfectly, perfectly fine. Now we need to export this, and it's going to be a heavy file. I'm going to export this on my... Um, on my, uh, what's the word on the desktop? Let's call this dwarf color. And very important, we need to export this. And actually, <laughs> let me go back. We're gonna go to the C plugin, same thing we did yesterday or on the on the last video for, for Arnold. We're gonna go FBX import, ASCII, uh, visible FBX 20, and we export this. So let's go to the desktop real quick. Let's just call this dwarf color and save. It's going to take a little while. Again, I think it's going to be probably like 50 megabytes, 
Nowadays, the uh, we've talked about this before, the bottleneck is no longer the amount of polygons. Most softwares can handle a huge amount of polygons. For instance, Unreal Engine can handle billions of polygons with Nanite nowadays, uh, but you still want to keep things like relatively efficient. So this one, yeah, 160 megabytes, so quite, quite a bit. Now, if you've um, jumped ahead to this part, then uh, make sure to check the last part. We we just finished doing a very cool poly paint. I showed you the whole process, so you can go and check that. And for those of you that are here, very easy. It's it's stupidly simple, guys. It's one button, literally. So we're just gonna go File, Import Model, and we're gonna import the uh, dwarf color. We're gonna wait for this to import. You guys, literally, uh, I'm not kidding. This is not clickbait or anything. You're not going to believe how easy it is to do color vertex instead of Marmoset. And as I mentioned before, if you want to learn a little bit more about Marmoset, you can check this in our Skillshare promo. The Skillshare promo is also down here in the description. We're offering, I believe it's 15 days free trial. So you can easily watch the whole Marmoset series for free uh, on Skillshare. So when we import the character right here, if we go to the material that it gets imported with, we can go to the albedo option and change albedo to vertex color. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all we needed to do. We just changed the albedo method, and instead of looking for an albedo map, it's going to be grabbing the vertex color. However, if we want to create a very nice render out of this guy, we can tweak a couple of things. First of all, we can play around with the roughness. This is one thing that's uh, really, really handy. We can get a more like skin-like effect. There we go. Uh, we can change the diffusion, uh, or not the diffusion, sorry, the... Where is it? Actually, I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to assign this new material here. We can still do the same thing, like uh, sample the, the vertex color, bring this up. And on the transmission, I'm going to change this to surface scattering. Why? Because I want to make this thing look like uh, like skin. We're definitely going to bring the, the scatter depth down a little bit so we don't have super, like, an extreme amount of translucency. We can increase the fuzz, for instance, if we're going to get this sort of, like, peach fuzz that we sometimes get with hair. Um, we can, of course, increase the roughness so the skin looks a little bit better, like, a little bit drier. And there we go. Now for the for the vertex color, we really can't do much. I, I believe we can darken this. Yeah, we can darken the tone a little bit. So it's a little bit too bright. You can move this around or influence it with a color. Uh, I don't recommend doing it as much though, because you might get some weird results. I'm just gonna lower the hue a little bit there. And now let me show you very quickly how we can um, how we can create a render out of this thing with a better light setup. The techniques that I like to use here inside of uh, Marvel Set are very similar to the ones that we use inside of uh, Arnold. I bring my backdrop brightness all the way down, okay? You can see that there's quite a bit of ambient here on the character. So we might wanna like bring this down, that the light of the colors, because that's one of the issues with vertex color that you are like, you, you're pretty much baking the color information on the object. Um, so we're bringing that down. And now I'm gonna do a very simple three light point, three point light setup. So I'm gonna go here, create a new light, increase the brightness. I like to change the temperature. So let's go for like a, like a warm light. There we go. We can play around with the diameter. The diameter is gonna soften the shadows a little bit, as you can see right there. I do think the roughness is still a little bit too high. So I'm gonna push it back a little bit more. The scatter depth might be too much as well, so let's just bring it back. Now, we're not using ray tracing. We're going to turn on ray tracing in just a second, and that's going to give us even better results. Look at that skin. That, that skin looks amazing um, because ray tracing is going to give us more realistic results. It's definitely going to be a little bit uh, heavier, but it's going to give us uh, things that look really, really nice. Let's go back to the sky and bring the brightness down a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to go to the side view, and now I'm going to add something called a rim light, which is just a very basic light that goes on the opposite side of the camera, usually, and it... Um, it pretty much, uh, what's the word? Frames, <laughs> frames the character into, into position like that. So now uh, this one, I'm also gonna increase the diameter a little bit so we get softer shadows. There we go, just a little bit. So the size of the, the bigger the size of the, of the light, the softer the light and the shadows are gonna be. And now if we turn on our uh, ray tracing, as you can see right here, we're gonna get a super professional um, like render. Look at this, like there's no way we can get this render out of ZBrush, right? Like we can, of course, play a little bit with perspective and stuff, but this sort of like realistic material, there's no way to get it. And look how nice the skin looks. The We can see a little bit of the yellows, of the reds, of the blues. We get a lot of depth uh, coming from the character. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Now let's just do a couple of things here with the camera. I'm going to go to the camera. I'm going to change the focal length to something like a 55. 55 tends to be a little bit better for, uh, for portraits because you don't distort the camera as much. And then, um, I, I don't know. That's pretty much what I would like to do. We can, of course, play with uh, like the exposure, expo 
expose this a little bit, maybe a little bit of contrast here, just to get some like sharper, nicer shadows. Um, yeah, I think that's it. We can give it a little bit more fuss, but as you can see, the the ray tracing is doing a great job of creating a super nice run. It looks like I think uh, you guys are gonna be the judges, but I think that it looks like a like a final render that you might have from like a Pixar, well not Pixar film, but like a like a cool cinematic, like the texture and the, and the cleanness of the element is really, really, really good. So uh, that's it, guys. I hope you like it. I hope you like this little video. Again, remember to check the Epic Bundle. It's only going to be available for January. And we also have the Skillshare. If you want to support the channel, if you want to support me and support the rest of the team that we're working hard to get you as much content as possible, getting the courses is the best way to do it. We have still a small community here. So um, even though the videos are monetized, the, the our main uh, source of income is, of course, the premium courses. So if you want to get any of those, you know my stuff, you know how I teach. Hopefully you like the way I teach and hopefully I can teach you way more and more stuff in the premium courses. So thank you very much, guys. Tomorrow, I think we'll continue with the um, with the environment. I know I promise we've been, with, I've been promising we are going to continue with that one, but uh, these topics are, have been very fun. And uh, don't forget that we also have our portfolio review coming this weekend. So if you're watching until the end of the video, make sure to submit your portfolio if you want me to check it out and uh, give you some feedback about your stuff. That's pretty much it for this one, guys. Thank you very much, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.